Welcome again friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about a topic which is not that much discussed yet. That is about the G banding. Now, I'll be talking a little bit about it, but uh, to make you understand what it is actually. Now, G banding uh, is simply termed as the GM sub banding or simply GM sub staining or GM sub staining, whatever you say. I say GM sub, whatever. Now, this GM sub banding. GM sub is a stain. And with the help of this GM sub stain, we can stain chromosomes. Right? Now, staining chromosomes are very, very important in certain perspectives. One thing is that if you are a cell biologist and you, if you want to study how the cell grow and divide in the different stages of cell division, you need to stain the chromosomes to order to in order to find them where they are ex exactly in uh, during the different stages of cell division. Except for that, if you look at other other purposes of GM staining, most important purposes are that we need this staining for understanding if there is any structural problem with the chromosome right because let's say we in, in our body in human body we have 23 pairs of chromosomes 22 pairs of autosome plus one uh, so this is a pair uh, then plus uh, one xy or xx which is a sex chromosome so ultimately we have 23 pairs of chromosome now what Let's say if we can stain all of these chromosomes with one particular dye, we don't need to bother about different coloration and all these things. Same color, but we can stain them with same dye. We can find the position of the chromosome by looking at through the microscope because we can see the chromosome uh, using microscope during metaphase. Remember, we cannot see chromosome directly in all the different cell division phases. We can only see them during metaphase and also we can see them uh, during you know during the interface after the right after the interface position when they start to be much and more uh, condensed so during those form we can actually see them so we can see their position we can see their height their length how they are arranged how they are uh, located so you can know all these things so by staining all the chromosomes inside nucleus we can have a picture of our chromosome map simply picture of our chromosome I can't say it as a chromosome map, that will be a different term, but we can call it a, a chromosome framework of someone's body. Or well, let's say, let's say we can see something like this. Let's say we can see the homologous pairs actually, like this. Let's say some is big, some is small, something like that. So this this imaging the thing i'm talking about here is that we can actually see all these different chromosomes at a single go by capturing them using staining with gms now by looking at them we can actually tell whether what is the length of a chromosome now let's say due to any problem if if one chromosome segment is deleted let's say due to a particular mutation uh, chromosomal level mutation there is a deletion of chromosome so due to the deletion of chromosome Usually, this chromosome should be slightly longer, but now the, after the deletion, it is shorter. So, after staining with GMSA, we can tell that yes, in this chromosome number 2, we can see there is a deletion, right? Or if there is any substitution, we can see all these things by this GMSA staining. And this framework of chromosome that we see here is called as a karyotype. It's called as karyotype, human karyotype. Karyotype means all set of chromosomes after the staining with the pictorial representation. That's the karyotype. And the process here is called as the karyotyping. They are karyotyping for different individual chromosomes, for humans, for other mammals, for birds and all these things. So karyotypes are available now uh, because it is extremely helpful at the preliminary level to understand if there is any problem going on structurally in the chromosome or not. But uh, other type of changes, uh, base pair mutations cannot be found with this, only the structural differences. Now, uh, for that reason, we need to stain those chromosomes, right? Now, for staining those chromosomes, we have this stain, GM stain. Now, this stain can give the color to the chromosome. Why? Because this is a kind of intercalating coloring agent. That means if there is a presence of all those bases like GCs and AT, both the type of base, this GM stain is going to stick to them and then finally give us the coloration. Normally, this GM stain is to stick to more with the AT and give us dark coloration. 
right? And if it is staying and attached to GC, very less. The affinity for this gene is staying to attach with the AT rich segment. So if there is any AT rich segment in the uh, in the chromosome, it will be much more darker. If it is the GC rich, it will be less darker. It will be lighter. Okay. So these are the two things. So based on this idea, if you if you imagine, if you see a chromosome with this staining pattern, what you can see is something like this. Something like this. Let's say this. So what we can see, if you, if you, if you uh, look at a, a book, you can find something like that. It's not a zebra thing, but uh, the idea here is, if you look at here, this dark segments are GC uh, AT rich, right? Now most of the dark segments are which are AT rich. If you if you look at the statistical input, you will find this idea that these AT rich segments are more of a heterochromatin region, and these GC rich segments are more of a euchromatin region. So remember euchromatin and heterochromatin. Euchromatin are the section of chromosome which are much more accessible for transcription and then translation of proteins. So they are accessible. They are the actual coding segment of our chromosome because our chromosome contains a lot of segments which are non-coding, which are not producing any mRNA transcript. So those regions are called hetero, which are that much not non-productive actually. So all those things are mainly containing AT rich segments. So they get more GMs are, they are stained with dark. So darker region means heterochromatin, lighter region means euchromatin or the coding site. So you can see here, the coding site in a chromosome is very less compared to the non-coding site. So that is another thing you can understand by this GM sustain. Now do you say if there is any problem with any segment here or there, any substitution, any deletion, any uh, inversion can't be determined, but substitution, deletion or addition, we can actually get the idea. So that is the importance of this G banding. How could you do this banding? We simply freeze a cell during its metaphase phase, uh, phase and in that metaphase stage, we treat that cell with trypsin. You know, trypsin is a protease which will degrade all those histones that are associated with these structures. Slide of them, we partially kind of digest all those chromosomes and the proteins associated with chromosomes a little bit, not completely, small, partial digestion. Then we treat it with the GM sustain, it will take up the stain. Okay, so this is the procedure of going through. I'm not talking about the procedure, but this is a very basic technique for the common normal karyotyping. But nowadays, uh, people have developed much more better quality karyotyping, like somatic hybridization, or we have other fluorescent karyotyping. In that cases, we have the fluorescent levels and you see different coloration for different chromosomes, which are much better to understand if there is any problem in structural or other features. But still, this is a very basic thing, but very helpful and inexpensive too. So that's it. If you like the video, subscribe and also watch more videos in this channel. Like this video, share it with your friends in other social platforms. Thank you very much. All the best.